Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this video, we'll look at how to create drill through reports using tables. We'll begin with a quick description of what drill through reports are, just in case you didn't already know, and then start by creating the target report, including how to add hidden parameters to that target. We'll then explain how to create the parent report and assign drill through actions to the table in that report. And finally, we'll talk about deploying those reports to the report server and how to hide the target report in the web portal. So let's get started. Here's an example of the type of report we'd like to create. This table shows some basic aggregates for a list of films grouped by which genre the film belongs to, as well as being able to see how many films belong to each genre, and the average runtime in minutes and the total number of Oscars won by all the films in the group, I can drill through to see the details of the films which make up these data points simply by clicking on one of the genre names. That loads a second table which displays the details of the films making up that group. And once I finish browsing through this list to confirm that yes indeed these are all awful films, I can go back to the parent list by clicking the back to parent report button and then pick a different genre to see a much better list of films. Now, although it looks as though I'm still in the original report here, the report title hasn't changed here, nor has the URL in the address bar, the table that I'm currently looking at is defined in a completely separate report builder RDL file. And the two reports are linked together by passing values to parameters in the child report when we click on an item in the parent report. If you have been following along with this video series so far, you should be pretty familiar with parameters by now, so you'll find this technique a bit of a breeze actually. If you would like to follow along, then you, you will need a copy of the YSL Movies database, and this video explains how to get that set up, and there's a link in that video's description you can use to download any files that you'll need. Assuming you've done that already, I've got a brand new blank report builder report waiting for me. And what we'll do in here to begin with is build the child report, which displays the list of films for a specific genre. I'll start by creating a data source to connect to the movie's database. So I'll right click on data sources and choose add data source. I'll call this one movies using an embedded connection pointing to a Microsoft SQL server. I can then click the build button to get some help with the connection string. And I'll start by typing in a shortcut to the local host, so that's dot backslash, and then the name of the instance of SQL Server I'm using, which is SQL 2017. I can then select my movies database from this drop down list and click OK a couple of times, and there's the data source created. I can then right click on the data source and choose to add a data set, and I'll call this one Genre Films, and then use the query designer to help select the fields that I'd like to display to the end user. So from the tables folder, I can expand the, the film table, and then I can select the title, the release date, the runtime minutes, and the Oscar wins. So these are the columns I'm going to display after the user has clicked on the name of a genre. I can click OK a couple of times, and there's the data set created. And then I'd just like to display those results in a simple table in the body of the report. Let's tidy up a little by removing the page footer and getting rid of this placeholder title text box. Then we can right click and choose to insert a table into the body of the report. And I'll just drag that up to the top left hand corner. I'll assign the four fields I've selected, title, release date, runtime, minutes, and then just drag Oscar wins and attach that to the right hand side of the table. Before I do anything else, I'm going to highlight all the cells in the table and then switch from the default font to any other and then back to the default font. And that's just to avoid the font rendering bug, which you'll be very familiar with if you've been following along with this series so far. And then some basic things just to change some column headings or so it's the column widths. I'll apply a nice date format to the release date so it's a little more readable. Maybe change the background color of the header row and make the font bold just alter the runtime minutes header so it just says runtime. And then if I run the report at that point, everything should look reasonably sensible. Next, I'd like to create a parameter so that we only see films from one specific genre. Let's head back to the design view. And again, we can do this in a couple of ways, as you'll know if you've watched the previous videos on parameters. I'm going to do this using a query parameter. So I'm going to right click on my dataset name and choose dataset properties, and then head into the query box on the dialog that appears. After the from clause, I'm going to add a where clause, 
and I'm going to ask to see only the films where the film.genre ID is equal to the name of a parameter and I'll make up my parameter name, I'll call it at genre ID. While I'm here, I'd also like to see my films sorted alphabetically. So I'm going to add an order by clause to the end of the select statement to say order by film dot title. Now that I've done that, I can click OK. And you'll see that creates the corresponding report parameter, which is linked to the query parameter. We could modify a couple of its basic properties. If I double click on the parameter in the parameters grid here, I can change its data type so that it matches the data type of the column we're comparing it with. So the genre ID column in the database is an integer. So I'm going to match the data type of the report parameter to that as well. For now, I'll just click OK and then give the report a quick test. If I run it, I can type in the number of a genre. If I type in number one, that gives me Western movies. I know my database reasonably well enough to know that the number one is Western movies. If I type in the number three instead and press enter, that gives me science fiction movies. So that's working quite nicely as well. As well as filtering by the genre ID, I'd like to be able to display the name of the genre that the user has clicked on in the title of the report or the title of the table. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the design view and I'm going to create a second parameter into which I can pass the genre name. Now it really doesn't matter where I, where I create this. It's going to be a report parameter. This does not need to influence the results of the data set. So I can right click in any of the boxes in the parameters grid or also on the parameters folder and choose to add a parameter. I'll call this one genre and the prompt doesn't really matter too much because the only person who's ever going to see it is you, the, uh, the report designer. The end user won't see this prompt, but I'll type in the, the, the value genre in the prompt as well. And I'll leave the data type of this set to text. I can then click OK. Then I'm going to insert a new row at the very top of my table. And I'm just going to merge all the cells in that top row together. And then I'm going to drag my genre parameter from the parameters folder into that cell and at the end of that, I'm going to type in the word films. So if I click on action, it will show action films. A quick bit of basic formatting. I'll just change the background color of that and then maybe the font color as well. And at the moment, this is going to work in a fairly rubbish way. When I run the report, I need to type in the name of the genre that I want to see. So if I type in Western, that will make the word Western appear, Western films. Um, I don't have to change that name at this point. Um, if I type in the number three for the genre ID, it still says Western Films. But of course, this is not how the value of this parameter will be provided. We'll provide a value to this parameter by clicking on a genre in another report. Now, when the end user runs this report, I don't want them to be able to see and type into these two text boxes. So to make that work, we can head back to the design view and then double click on each of the two parameters and make them hidden. The third option there, internal, means the parameter will be hidden but can't have a value passed into it from outside. So that's absolutely no use to us in this particular system. We need to be able to pass a value to this parameter from the parent report. So hidden is the correct choice here. Let's do the same thing for the genre parameter. I'll choose hidden for its visibility property. And you can see that those parameters are now greyed out or ghosted in the parameters grid. This does leave us with a small problem if we want to continue testing this. So for example, if we'd made changes to the formatting and we wanted to see what influence that formatting change has on the report, if I try to run the report at this point, I can't because both parameters require a value and I've got no way to pass values into those parameters just by running the report like this. One thing you might consider doing if you want to be able to continue testing design changes of this report is back in the design view, you could assign default values to these two parameters. So I could double click on my genre ID parameter and choose default values, choose to specify values, click add, and then type in a value which I know exists in the genre ID column. So I'll type in the value one, which will always return Western films. Now, of course, this value will be replaced in the full system. When we click on the name of a genre in the parent report, it will pass the relevant value into this parameter. So that will be overwritten. I can click OK for the genre ID. And then for the genre parameter, let's do something similar. I'll go to default values, choose to specify values, and I'll type in the word testing. So I'll click OK. 
and then run the report and I can actually run it this time. And you'll see testing films and I'm showing a list of Westerns. So at this point, I think we're done with the design of the child report. What we need to do now is save it so that we can target it when we click on an item in the parent report. To make this work, it's really important that you save the child report to the report server. Otherwise, you can't set up the, uh, the drill through system. So I'm going to head back to the design view and then I'm going to click the save button and point to my recent sites and servers. And then I'm going to point to the one that I've just been showing you at the start of the video. And I've created a separate folder for this called drill through reports. I'll change the name of the report. I'll call it something like uh, genre films target or genre films child report or any other meaningful name that you can think of. And when I've done that, I can click save and then that's that report done. OK, now let's start building the parent report. To do that, I'm going to head to the file menu and choose new and then choose to create a blank report, which will close down the one that we're currently working on and start with a fresh blank report. I'm going to right click on the data sources folder and add data source. This is all going to seem a little bit like deja vu at this point, but I'll create a data source called movies, use an embedded connection pointing to Microsoft SQL Server, click the build button, enter a shortcut to my local host, the name of my SQL Server instance, and then select my movies database from the drop down list. I'll click OK a couple of times, and then I can create my data set. Now, this data set needs to be a little more complicated than the previous one. If I want to create a grouped table, I've got a few different choices. So I could create my grouped table within the data set itself using the group by clause in my SQL Server query. Or I could just return all the detail rows from the data set and apply grouping in the table itself using the groups panel. For this particular video, I'm going to use the group by clause in the query. So I'm going to right click on my movies data source and choose add data set. I'll call this one uh, genre, let's call it genre aggregates. And then I'll click the query designer button at the bottom and start selecting some fields. I'll go to the genre table first and pick the genre ID and the genre name. Those are the two values that I'd like to pass into my child report. I'll then go to the film table and pick a few columns that I can aggregate. So I'm going to pick the film ID, the runtime minutes, and the Oscar wins. Now I'm going to enable the group and aggregate option by clicking on that button at the top of the dialog box. I'm going to leave the genre ID and the genre fields grouped or grouped by. For the film ID, I'm going to change the aggregate to say count. And then for runtime minutes, I'm going to choose AVG. And then for Oscar wins, I'm going to choose sum. Now at this point, I can choose to run my query just to see what sorts of results we get. And you can hopefully see when I run that, I'll get my number of films, average runtime and Oscar wins. One slightly unusual thing about the average runtime is that it appears as a whole number. And the reason for that is that the runtime minutes field in the underlying database is a whole number or an integer. You can see that if I hover the mouse cursor over that field. So in SQL Server, if you take the average of a bunch of whole numbers, you get a, a whole number as a result. We can make sure that that gets returned as a decimal or a fractional value by changing the data type in the query. To do that, I can choose edit as text and then I can find where it's calculating the average runtime minutes. And then within the average function, I can tell this runtime minutes field to be treated as or converted into or cast to one of the decimal data types. So it's AVG, open some round brackets. I've got a couple of choices for functions, but I'm going to use the cast function here and then open up some round brackets. Film.runtime minutes as, and again, I have several choices for data type. I'm going to use the one called float, short for floating point number. I'll then close the extra set of round brackets for the AVG function, sorry, for the cast function, I should say. And then if I run the query again by clicking the exclamation mark button, you can hopefully see this time the results come out as a decimal or a fractional value. So at this point, I can click OK. I'll then click OK again. And that's my grouped and aggregated data set created. 
Now let's create a basic table to display the results of that data set. Again, I'll just tidy up the report by getting rid of the bits that I don't need. And then I can right click somewhere in the report body and choose to insert a new table. I'll drag that up to the top left hand corner. And I'm going to show the genre value or the genre field as the first column, then the count of films, the average runtime and the sum of Oscar wins. I'll just highlight all the cells in the table again and change from the default font to any other and then back to the default font. A bit of basic formatting for the column headings again and then change the column widths a little. There are a few other changes I'll want to make as well but let me just show you what I need to do when I run the report. So let's just get those column widths correct, there we go. So when I run the report you'll see that the average runtime I've successfully calculated uh, a value with decimal places, but there, I think there are a few too many there, perhaps. So uh, there's a couple of changes I'd like to make. Let's get the formatting of that number looking a bit neater. Let's reduce it to two decimal places. And let's also sort the list alphabetically. So I'll head back to the design view. I'll select the average runtime minute cell and then simply apply a number format to that. That automatically creates uh, a number with two decimal places. And then I'm going to use the Tablex Properties dialog box to create a sort order for the table. So I can right click on any of the grey boxes around the outside of the table and choose Tablex Properties. Head to the sorting page, click Add and then choose to sort by genre. I can then click OK, just reduce the amount of white space below in the report body and then click Run to run the report. And there we go, there's a fairly neat looking table showing me the basic aggregates for films in each genre. The next step is to create the action so that clicking on the name of a genre will load the report we've just saved to the report server. To do that, let's go back to the design view and I'm going to right click on the genre text box and choose text box properties. On the left hand side, I'm going to select the action page and then it's fairly intuitive what to do from this point on. If I choose to go to a report, I can browse for a report that's saved to my report server. Notice you can't browse in your local file systems. That's why we had to save it on the report server first. And then I can go to my uh, drill through reports folder and then choose my genre films target report. Then I need to add at least one parameter to make the whole thing work. I'm going to click add a couple of times actually to add two parameters. And then I can simply select from the drop down list the parameters I've defined in the report I've saved. So I'll choose genre ID and genre, and then choose the values from this report that we're going to pass into those parameters. So I've made sure my names match to make it nice and easy. I don't have to do too much thinking, always a good thing. So I'm going to choose genre ID and genre. Having done that, I can click OK and I don't need to save my parent report to the report server or even save this report at all to test it. If I run the report now, I can, when it finally loads, click on the cell containing a genre name. And when I do that, it loads in to Report Builder the table containing the details of the genre I've clicked on. To get back to the parent report, I can click this simulated back button here in the navigation section of the ribbon and then click on a different genre to see a different list of films just to check that the system is working and that looks pretty good at this point. One thing that I'd be tempted to do just to help out the end user is try to indicate that these cells are clickable because it's not immediately obvious when the report first loads that you can click on them. So a nice simple thing we can do is format these to look like a hyperlink. This is going to cause a bit of a problem when we upload it to the report server, but I'll talk about that shortly. For now, let's just go back to the design view and I'm going to select the genre cell and I'll change the font color to blue and then provide a basic underlying feature as well. So when I've done that, I can run the report and it now looks a lot more like something that's clickable, a little bit old fashioned perhaps, but still a nice indicator that you can click on something to execute an action. Now let's look at what happens when we save this report to the report server. Back in the design view, I'm going to hit the save button and then I'm still pointing to my drill through reports folder. Let's call this something like a genre parent report or genre selector or something else that's meaningful. When I save that to the report server and then navigate to that drill through reports folder, 
I'll need to refresh this folder first to make sure I can see my new reports. And when they do finally appear, eventually, any moment now, it always seems to take a long time when I'm trying to demonstrate this in a video, there we go. So I can open up my genre parent report, but I'm hoping that what you can see there is that I definitely changed the color of my font, but that hasn't actually been reflected in the uploaded version of this report. Apparently this is a bug that's to do with a combination of reporting services 2017, which is the version I'm using, and the Google Chrome browser, or in fact, the new Microsoft Edge browser as well. I suspect it's any browser based on the Chromium framework. Um, so there's a simple solution to this. It's just not a very obvious one. If I go back to the report that I'm uh, designing in Report Builder, and if I select the cell that contains the genre that I've formatted it in a blue font, I'm going to look over in the properties window at the right hand side and you can see that clearly is blue there. What I'm then going to do is change this from the absolute value blue to be an expression. I'm going to type in an equals operator in front of the word blue and then wrap the word blue in some double quotes. Not much to do there really is there. If I click if I hit enter to confirm that the font color of that cell when I save it to the report server now and then head back to my Chrome browser and refresh this page. This now finally displays the color that I've selected. The final thing I might be tempted to do just to keep things neat and tidy is to make sure that in the drill through reports folder, I can't see the genre films target report to accidentally click on it and load some sort of meaningless testing data. So to make that work, if I navigate back to that folder, I can find my target report and click the dot 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 the ellipsis button at the top right hand corner. Then I can choose to manage this report from the menu that appears. And I can choose to hide this item by checking that box and then clicking apply. And once I've done that, I can go back to my drill through reports folder, just using these breadcrumbs at the top and see that I can't find my target report. The only way I can reach it now is by selecting a genre from my parent report. That does kind of beg the question though, what do you want, how on earth do you find that report to uh, modify it or delete it or move it or rename it or anything else? Well, in order to do that, you can use the tiles drop down menu at the top right hand corner here and choose to show hidden items. And they appear sort of grayed out and ghosted. And so if you wanted to change them back to visible again, you can click the same more options dot 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 button, choose manage, uncheck the hide this item button and then apply and back to the drill through reports folder. So there we go, the basics of setting up a drill through system by assigning an action to a text box in a table. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.